Okay, welcome back to Central Ontario. Uh, for all you Kubota lovers, um, we're, you'll notice we're just starting to get the first uh, uh, sightings of snow, so it's going to be a little while before I have a chance to test out the snowblower on my uh, Kubota B2601. But I wanted to thank everybody for their comments and support. I, I'm glad that some folks are, are getting some, uh, enjoying the videos or at least learning something or, you know, finding them entertaining. I uh, did notice that a couple of people mentioned that they saw that I had solar panels on the house. So I thought I'd throw a video together this week and maybe explain how the solar system works on my home. I am totally off grid, which means I am not connected to any local utility distribution company. So I don't get electricity or natural gas from a, a, the local utility. I am totally self-generated, which means the house runs by itself. And uh, I'll explain that and spend a few minutes to tell you how it works. I'm very excited, uh, very green. I'm, I'm happy to be self-generated and the system works great. Totally supports the house. I have every amenity in my home as any other person's home would have with the exception of air conditioning because I chose not to put it in. And uh, you're going to see first, we're going to fly over. I'm going to show you three of the main components of the system, which would be the solar panels, uh, backup generator, which you'll see in the backyard. And you'll also see a fuel source, which is propane, um, which powers, you know, a number of different things. My furnace, my backup generator, my uh, oven, fireplace, my barbecue, etc. So stick with me. Let's do a little flyover and then I'll uh, take you inside and show you how it works. Thanks. Okay, so you've seen some of the components of the solar system from the outside and I just wanted to bring you into the hydro room just to show you what the components look like and how they work. So my hydro panel is here of course and uh, as you can see it's completely tied into my, uh, my inverter charge controller unit and this is basically the brains behind the solar. This uh, is the unit that automates everything and makes sure that the house is, is running properly and receiving the right type of voltage all the time to make sure that you know, I'm able to turn on lights, use my oven, and, and live. Uh, as I mentioned to you, I'm about a mile and a quarter off uh, off the main concession, so uh, the cost of getting the local utility to bring in poles and wires was prohibitive, and, and in fact, the solar system was far, cheap, uh, far cheaper than it was to, to hook up to the utility, which is one of the reasons why I got it, not to mention I like being green. So uh, a couple of the components, this here, this is your meter, which uh, I'll, I don't know if you could see it okay, but basically this is connected to the directly from the solar panels on the roof, and this meters the, the number of watts or the amount of energy that's coming in off of the roof, feeds into your charge controller um, uh, and your inverter unit here, and so this is feeding your electricity in from the roof. Um, you'll see here that there's a you know a couple of breakers in here there's one for my generator which I talked to you about the uh, backup generator outside I also have a portable generator plug on the outside of the house in the event that you know for some reason the generator doesn't work and you know it's January it's negative 25 or negative 30 degrees Celsius and the generator is not sparking I actually have a plug outlet on the outside of the house that I can take a portable generator and plug it in and spark it up and and power the house um, so your breakers are in there, some of your, your transfer switches, etc. Uh, this is your uh, your inverter charger. You'll see that there's a, uh, a nice screen here. And basically what this is telling you is what's happening in the house. So right now the house is consuming power and we're consuming about 380, 370 watts right now of power. That's kind of your real time power draw. And anytime you know you use an oven or you turn on lights or you you know turn on the microwave or make a pot of coffee, you'll see every time you turn a different device on, this is giving you real time uh, usage of how much your house is consuming. So it'll jump up, and I'll I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you in a minute. Also, um, I can actually be tied to the the local utility if I want to. I choose not to. I'm totally off grid. Uh, but it will also take two other external generation sources, one of which, of course, is my backup generator, and the other is the outlet for a portable generator if I should choose to, to plug it in. Um, so right now we're drawing power in the house, uh, 370 watts right now. Um, this little device here, these lights, are showing you how much storage is left in the batteries in the basement. Um, 
I have 12 uh, AGM batteries, glass mat batteries down there, and I won't show you what they look like. It's basically, they look like oversized car batteries. They're about 120 pounds a piece. They're three or four times the size of a car battery, but they look just like a car battery. And they're connected into this charge controller as well. Um, your Xantrex unit here, this is the automated uh, interface that talks to the generator out in the backyard tells it when to turn on and turn off when it takes signals from the charge controller and this is my my overall uh, my computer panel here that allows me to program in different thresholds or units allows me to see what I'm using so right now I think we're using about uh, 48.7 volts right now is what we have left in the batteries uh, downstairs and it's telling me how much of the battery is remaining versus the load which is you know my 300 and now 380 watts so it kind of gives you a visual of how much is left in the batteries and how much the house is drawing. And then this is also the unit you use to program all the automation in your inverter charge controller. So how it works basically is uh, the solar panels, when it can during the day, it you know absorbs sunlight, it creates energy. Energy goes into the charge controller. The charge controller says, oh, okay, power the house. First and foremost, make sure the house is working so Gord can turn on lights. And in the event that there's extra uh, power coming off the roof, the charge controller will divert the extra power down to continue to charge the batteries for nighttime when there is no sun. And then as the solar panels, as night comes on and the solar panels stop uh, producing electricity, the charge controller knows to draw more of the storage out of the batteries to continue to, to keep the house uh, all lit up. Um, when it starts to run low and say for example my batteries are slowly running low uh, when it gets to a certain threshold which I set in this program myself the charge controller says hey there's not enough battery power we need to recharge the batteries we're not getting anything off the roof and it will automatically signal the generator and tell the generator to turn on by itself generator turns on it uh, pumps voltage uh, and uh, into the system and the charge controller will first run the house and then it takes the additional voltage from the generator and continues to charge the batteries. Once the batteries are fully charged, the charge controller tells it to shut off and the house just continues. What's uh, pretty wonderful about the system is it is completely automated and when you switch between the solar panels on the roof and the generator and the batteries, because those are basically my three power sources, it happens so fast in milliseconds that there's no change to the house. So I don't know when it's taking power from the batteries versus the generator short of hearing it versus the roof because this charge controller manages things in split seconds. So it flips the power source so quickly that, you know, the lights don't even dim. I don't even know it's changed. Um, this, uh, this panel itself, I have, you know, I set my own settings. so. Once, in my case, I, I've set it so that we don't run the batteries down past 47% of their capacity. As soon as it gets there, charge controller signals the generator, generator turns on. When generator is finished filling the batteries, charge controller flips back just to battery power and it, and it serves the house. And that's basically how it works. Panels produce when there's sunlight and even in, in some of the foggiest and most miserable days, you still get some power off of the, the roof. I've only got 2kW up there. Uh, two kilowatts worth of capacity, but even on an overcast day, you're still going to generate some power off the roof, even though it's not anywhere near as much as you would on a really bright sunny day. And so, uh, you know, here in Ontario, we've got, you know, nice warm summers and we've got cold winters with a lot of snow up here in central Ontario. So somewhere around the middle to the end of December through to February, there are very few days that I don't have three or four feet of snow on the roof, which means the panels just don't generate. So. I have enough batteries in the basement that hold enough storage that I can run the entire house. Um, you know, furnace, you know, fridge, lights, uh, furnace, um, sorry, oven, uh, barbecue, all of my, you know, my water pump, my sewage pump, everything gets run. And I can go for about a day to a day and a half in the middle of winter uh, on just the storage that's sitting in the batteries in the basement. And basically what happens is, of course, you're not getting any power off the roof. so. Every day to day and a half, the batteries eventually, you know, drop down and the charge controller signals and tells the generator to turn on, which is why I need a fuel source, which is propane, uh, because I'm not connected to any utilities, uh, be it natural gas or electricity.
and it all feeds right into the house totally runs the entire house so what I'll show you just briefly is uh, just what happens when I turn on I'll let uh, I'll turn on a water faucet to allow the water pump to click on and you'll see what happens and you'll see as soon as the water pump turns on which draws a big load you'll see how much it jumps up only for about 40 seconds till the pump fills the tank uh, but you'll see what happens Okay, and there you see it. So my water pump is just turned on. It's now filling up the uh, the tank in the basement. It'll run, but you can see how quickly it jumps up because pumps take a lot of load off of the batteries. They immediately jump up to 2.1 kilowatts. Um, it, luckily, it's only for about 30 or 40 seconds, but of course, these big load type items like the sewage pump, um, the stove, you know, uh, microwave, the water pump, these things will draw a large amount of energy in a very short period. But of course, I've got enough um, capacity in the batteries to handle that immediate draw, but it does bring the batteries down quicker. So uh, if I'm using a lot of water, I'm going to cycle that pump much more often. Or if I'm using the microwave a lot, I cycle it a lot, which of course affects how long I can go off a of battery power before I have to trigger the generator to run. Um, so you'll see in uh, within a few seconds, 10 or 15 seconds, this should shut off and go right back down because the pump's finished. And as you can see it is, the water pump is finished, it's filled the tank, and we're back down to our resident load. Anyway, so that's my solar system. Uh, I love it a lot. I love being green. I like the fact that I don't pay utilities for power or any other extra costs. And, and as you know, some of you may realize when you're in the rural areas, the uh, cost of electricity is very expensive uh, because you're feeding a, a rural community and, and obviously uh, you know, dividing those costs between much fewer residents. So. I'm totally off grid when the power goes out in the area, which it does a lot. You know, I'm the only one on the lake with lights on. And, uh, and of course, I get to see my neighbors quite often, especially when it's cold out. Anyways, I hope it was helpful or informative. Uh, have a great week. Waiting for the snow so I can get the, the tractor out and uh, test out the snowblower. Have a great week. Thanks for watching.